Hi, in this video we're going to look at how I transferred my Librem Mini from its factory chassis into the HDplex H1V3 fanless case. The Librem Mini motherboard, it's like an all-in-one, so the power button is actually soldered directly onto the motherboard, and the power LED is also soldered directly onto the motherboard. Now the HD Plex case that I'm transferring it to, that has uh, its own power button and its own power LED. So I desoldered the Librem Mini power switch and power LED, and I soldered on some header pins that I can attach the HD Plex power cable to. So that's what those blue wires are there. Those are for the power switch uh, pins that I'm going to attach. The LED ones are directly soldered onto the board, so it's just a case of pushing on the LED cable to uh, connect that up. So we've got the holes there on the motherboard. These are some prototype adapters I made so that I could convert the holes on the motherboard to the holes on the HD Plex case. And it was quite a struggle to get the exact hole spacing. I had to use a set of calipers and measure it, but I wasn't 100% sure I got the uh, spacing correct. I did actually ask Purism if they could provide the measurements they weren't able to. I also tried to contact the Chinese manufacturer. Uh, they also wouldn't provide the measurements, so I had to do it myself. So yeah, these are the 3D printed prototypes. So my brother has a 3D printer and uh, he knows how to use 3D software, so I drew these in 2D, sent them to him, he turned them into a 3D model and printed them off for me. The CPU spacing is also non-standard, so this is the HD Plex heatsink, and it's, uh, as you'll see, it doesn't line up with the holes I've got here on the Libra Mini because it's designed for an Intel NUC. So we had to design an adapter for this as well, so again we prototyped it first on the 3D printer and then we had it manufactured in aluminium. Uh, so that's just a a simple little adapter, but again it was a case of measuring the holes and uh, just making sure everything lined up. So we did a couple of tests with that, and you can see there's little standoffs there, just to make sure that the adapter is above any components that are on the motherboard, because there are a few components in that area around the CPU. These holes are also threaded as well, so that they can be screwed in from either side. So this is the final base plate adapter, and we added some little standoffs to it. If you're going to attempt this kind of thing, I don't recommend you build the standoffs into the motherboard adapter like I've done, because it actually works out quite expensive unless you find a cheaper way to do it. But the way we did it with these little sort of push through plugs that are tapped, uh, it, it worked out quite expensive to do. What I'd recommend is you just find different motherboard standoffs to screw in, because you'll see later on in the video I am actually going to use motherboard standoffs as well, but I just needed a bit of additional height, so that's why we had these standoffs built into the plate, but in hindsight it would have been better just to use longer motherboard standoffs or connect two separate motherboard standoffs together. So we're just screwing in the CPU adapter. This has to be done before the RAM goes in because the RAM will actually cover over some of these screw slots. And I'm putting in 64 gigs of RAM, which is the maximum this board can take. And I am using the screws here that came with the Librem Mini. These are the ones that were originally holding the Librem Minis. CPU plate in place. So that's on, we can see there's a, a nice clear gap between the motherboard and any components. And we'll put the SATA cable on now as well. Basically we have to put everything on this side of the board first because when it goes into the new case it's going to be flipped over and we won't have access to this side of the board. I also got an extender for the uh, SATA cable in case I need it. As it turned out I didn't need it but I had it uh, on standby just in case. So 
So the next thing I did, I, I didn't want to use the Wi-Fi card slot for a Wi-Fi card. I don't need Wi-Fi in this. I'm going to plug it in to the internet with Ethernet. So I decided to convert the Wi-Fi port into a mini PCIe port and then convert that into a USB 2.0. Uh, this, uh, this slot can't handle the speed of a USB 3, so that's why I'm converting it to USB 2. And even though this little card here looks like it has a USB 3 port, that USB uh, port on there actually can only support USB 2 speeds anyway. So it won't fit in, as you can see, so I had to get another adapter. And the cable's a bit long, so I decided to use the shorter one that came with it. So it's just a case of uh, swapping that out. And then I can plug that into the slot on the motherboard and plug the USB adapter into the end of that. And that ribbon cable gives me enough flexibility to position this when I finally get it all installed inside the case. So above this, we have the M.2 slot. And again, I wanted to put an extending adapter in there. And this doesn't convert the format. It's still going to be an M.2 for an NVMe. But I wanted the extension so that I could swap out the drive in the future if I needed to without having to take the motherboard back out. And this was the only extender I could find at the time, and it's not the best, it's a bit cumbersome and a bit too long, but it does the job. So now we can see how this is going to fit in once in the case. So this whole thing would be flipped the other way up so that the CPU is on the top and we no longer have access to any of the parts underneath. So that's why I wanted to use those extension cables there so I could still access those things. Okay, so this is the HD Plex H1 series in its uh, box. This is the H1 V3. And this is designed for an, a mini ITX motherboard or an Intel NUC, but it's uh, perfectly well rated for the Libra Mini as well. It's got a maximum TDP, I believe, of 65, and the TDP of the Libra Mini is, I think, it's 25 or something. It's quite far below, so uh, it's, it's easily within spec. Also, the guys at HD Plex, they were really helpful, and they gave me a full 3D technical model of the HD Plex case so I could see every single uh, bit of it in detail and take all the measurements virtually and accurately. So that was a really big help and I was really grateful to them for uh, providing me with that 3D model. And these are the side panels for the case, which are essentially big, thick, chunky heat sinks that um, wick all of the heat away. 
and they they have uh, heat pipes that go into the slots on the side of those heat sinks. So we'll see that later on. Those are the slots for the power cable and audio jack and a USB C port. The, that's the rear of the case. This is where the back plate will slot in. So you can see that will just go in there like that. And I made this back plate a little smaller than it needed to be. Uh, that way I have, again, a bit of wiggle room just in case I needed to make adjustments once it was installed. The actual holes where the screws go in to hold the motherboard adapter onto the base of the HD Plex case I did as these uh, longer slots and that's because I just wanted to have that little bit of extra wiggle room in case I needed to make some slight adjustments once I put it all together. So those are the motherboard standoffs, the tiny little things, and they just screw into the standoffs that are built into the motherboard adapter. Like I say, I wouldn't do it this way if I was doing it again. I'd uh, use longer motherboard standoffs or attach two motherboard standoffs together. When designing these uh, custom adapters, I had to make sure everything would line up so that when the motherboard was actually in here, all the parts would line up with the back plate. So I needed to know in advance what length motherboard standoffs I was going to be using, which is why in the end I decided to add the tiny little extra bit to the motherboard adapter rather than uh, redesign everything to line up for a different height of motherboard standoff. So you can see the this is the cable that came with the case and it's a standard USB header, but of course uh, the Librem Mini doesn't have one of those headers. So I actually got an adapter to convert a USB 3 port into a USB 3 header. So here I'm just attaching the power cable USB uh, C part and the audio jack to the new case. So these are all cables that came with the HD Plex case.
The case itself is fairly straightforward to put together and the instructions that come with it are pretty clear. It also comes with a few uh, tools as well, the little hex screwdriver thing uh, that, that came with the case, so that was a nice touch. So we also had the backplate manufactured in aluminium as well. These were uh, water jet cut for me by Octagon Precision. Uh, they're a company I've used before when I was uh, building a custom PC case as well. Uh, th they do really good work and uh, they're very helpful. So you can see how the backplate slides in here and has a bit of wiggle room for any adjustments that are needed. So it's got vertical wiggle room and uh, horizontal. I'll leave a link to Octagon Precision's website in the video description in case you want to get in touch with them to get some uh, water jet cutting done for your project. So now that's together, it's time to put the motherboard in. Uh, the back plate is only held in by the motherboard, there aren't any separate screws for that. We had to prototype the back plate a few times because measuring the space between all the different parts and measuring the size of the parts and getting everything exact, both horizontally and vertically, was quite a challenge. I think we did two or three prototypes for that before we got it right. So here I'm just plugging in the power cable and the power LED. A lot of this video, especially towards the end, is essentially cable management because it's a small case and to just route all the cables neatly so they're not getting in the way and so there's room for all the various components to fit in. It takes a bit of time and I like to uh, do a, a as tidy a job as possible. And you can see here I'm deciding which side of the motherboard standoff to put the uh, M.2 slot extension and in hindsight I wish I'd put it on the other side of the standoff but as it was I put it on that side and it worked out okay but I think it would have been better on the inside of it of the uh, standoff instead. Once again I'm using the screws here that came with the Libram Mini so these originally held the Libram Mini uh, motherboard in the factory chassis. So just cleaning up the CPU there with a bit of isopropanol. Just to remove any traces of old uh, CPU thermal paste. So I'm also cleaning off the copper heatsink that came with the HD Plex case. So it's a really nice heatsink, solid copper, which is great. Uh, the top part that goes on top of that, which you'll see in a little while, that's uh, aluminium, but the base part that actually touches the CPU, that's copper, which is uh, great for 
good thermal transfer. So just having a look at the instructions there to see exactly how it's going to fit and which way around it needs to go. So I'm actually using some uh, Noctua thermal paste here. This is just some thermal paste I had. The case does actually come with uh, its own thermal paste, which I use later on on top of the heatsink. But between the heatsink and the CPU, I wanted to use this Noctua stuff. I've used it before and I know it gives good results, so I wanted to use this. Screwing down the copper heatsink took a bit of time because I had to make sure I was screwing it down level. Uh, because this is just a, an adapter that I've made, there's um, nothing to give any feedback about how much pressure I'm putting on or if the pressure is even. So I just wanted to take my time and I was kind of eyeballing it and doing it by feel, just making sure I wasn't putting too much pressure on. And uh, basically I just wanted to get it so it was secure, it wasn't wobbling around, it wasn't twisting, and it was level. And it was just... A case of adjusting the screws delicately one at a time until I felt it was in the right spot. So these are the heat pipes that came with the HD Plex case. Now this created a slight problem for me because I'd made this custom adapter to put the motherboard in and I'd seen these uh, HD Plex 3D models that they'd sent me. I knew that the motherboard was not going to be at the height it was meant to be at for this case. So uh, it should be a bit lower than it ends up being. And that's just because uh, on, on an Intel NUC, for example, the ports like the usb ports and stuff they're mounted sort of centrally on the motherboard whereas on the libra mini the ports are mounted on the underside or the the, the underside when i flipped it upside down like this so it needs more space underneath which raises the whole board up which in turn raises the cpu up and raises up the heatsink so i knew that these heat pipes weren't going to line up properly with the side panel slots and what I had to do, uh, I actually got a pipe bender and I just bent them ever so slightly just to adjust them and line them up with the slots. And I spent some time now just sort of figuring out which ones will go in a slot, not necessarily the slot they're meant to go in, and which ones won't. And the ones that won't go in, I just have to bend slightly just to make them fit in. And I think in the end, I only have to bend two of them. So I'm just playing around with them to find out which combination works and requires me to do the least amount of bending. Now, because I anticipated that I'd have this problem and I knew I was going to have to bend these heat pipes a bit, I wanted to have a backup in case I broke them. So I bought from eBay four spare heat pipes that are the same length, but they're straight, uh, that I could bend if necessary in case I accidentally broke one of these. As it turned out I didn't break any so I have four spare heat pipes which I might use in another project. So once I got the configuration of all these pipes uh, worked out, I just had to clean the grooves where the pipes run and I'm going to put thermal paste in there. So I cleaned those out with isopropanol like I did for the CPU 
And then using this tool that is provided with the HD Plex case, which they call the dumbbell tool, and using the thermal paste they provide, I just have to spread the thermal paste through each of these grooves. And this thermal paste is quite runny, and as you can see, it just sort of squirted out, and I wasn't expecting it, so I had a little bit of cleanup to do. Um, but it's a, it's a thinner paste than the Noctua stuff that I was used to. But it wasn't a problem, a cotton bud and a bit of isopropanol, I was able to uh, clean it up. And then using the dumbbell tool, we just spread it through each of those grooves. And then once I've got it spread into each of the uh, little grooves, I've also got to put the thermal paste on the wall of the case, on the heatsink part. So I, I just put the heat pipe in there just to help me sort of measure where I need to put the paste. I'm just using some of the excess off the heatsink there to put onto the side wall because I had a bit too much on the heatsink. So now I've put the paste on both sides of the case, and now I'm just fitting the heat pipes. And then once the heat pipes are in, there's these little black metal panels that just screw onto the side to hold the heat pipes firmly into those slots on the uh, heat sink sides of the case. And then once the side panels are done, the top part of the heat sink goes on and that holds the heat pipes firmly against the CPU heat spreader. And it just sort of cinches everything together really nice and neatly and firmly. 
And again, I had to put a bit of uh, thermal paste in the grooves on this part of the uh, heatsink as well. So once that's all put together, now it's just a case of fitting the power supply. This uh, power supply is optional because I can just use the power supply that came with the Librem Mini. But I chose to install this power supply as well uh, because this allows me to use a kettle plug, which is uh, a standard uh, PC power cable, uh, to power the Librem Mini. So the kettle lead w plugs into this power supply and then this power supply has a little uh, 19 volt output that plugs into the Librem Mini's motherboard uh, on the outside of the case. So it's a really uh, simple way of doing it and it gives me the option to use a standard power supply lead instead of having to use the one that came with the Librem Mini. And now the process is basically a load of cable management, just plugging things in and trying things out and seeing which combination of cable layouts works the best. So here I'm putting in that USB 3 to USB header adapter and this is for the USB-C port that goes near the power switch on the side of the case. And it was a bit fiddly to do this because I didn't have much room to work and the cable is quite stiff and kept sort of springing out of place. So just trying to fit everything in without putting any stress on the USB ports or on the cable was a bit fiddly but I got it done and it wasn't too difficult. So I got some adapters so I could take the internal USB ports and put them onto the back plate. And again, I designed the back plate with this in mind and measured everything out so that these ports could go on. And that little USB adapter I put into the Wi-Fi slot earlier, that again has an extension cable which goes onto the back plate. So it just gives me more options for plugging things in and since most of my devices will run perfectly well on USB 2 I figured I might as well have a, an extra USB 2 on the back there. So I'm actually planning to put two 4 terabyte SSDs in here so I can plug this second one into the USB 3 port 
I don't have it available at the moment, uh, so I'm actually not going to do that in this video, but I'll do that at a later date. And that way I'll have the internal NVMe for my operating system drive, and then I'll have two additional storage drives. So that will give me uh, plenty of storage space and plenty of speed in uh, this nice little case. So again, we're just back to cable management now, just f figuring out where all these uh, wires are going to go and make sure I've got enough room to lay everything out neatly. So here I'm fitting the NVMe drive. Uh, this is just a spare one I had. It's not going to be the final NVMe. I think this is a 256 gig drive, but it won't be the one I'll, I'll use in the end. But it's good enough for testing. And I've put a little heat sink on it. Not that it really needs it because it doesn't tend to get that hot. So the hard drive or SSD bracket that it can support two SSDs. And I think it's actually possible to fit an three up to three SSDs in the case, or, or maybe even four, depending on the configuration. But I'm planning on putting two in here. So um, we'll put one on this side, and this is going to use the SATA cable that's on the motherboard, that one we fitted right at the beginning. And then the second SSD drive I'll put in at a later date with that USB 3 cable. But before I can fit that, of course, I've got to put the CMOS battery back on. Because that would be rather difficult to do with the drives in the way. So we're coming to the end of the video now, just putting the final touches on. We've got to put the front plate on, which is a big block of aluminium. And this just slots on the front with a, uh, held on by a few screws. If you would like any of the uh, custom mods I made for this, the CPU adapter, the back plate, or the motherboard adapter, if you want the designs for it, I can send you the uh, vector files that I created, the 2D files. Um, just put a comment and if there's interest I'll add some links to the video description.
So I'll just have a quick sort of flyover. You can just see where I've tucked all the cables, how everything's laid out. Uh, it's a really nice case. And when I've been using it just for my day-to-day -day work, I've not exceeded about 35 degrees C. Uh, I haven't done anything heavy yet like video rendering, but I do um, sort of day-to-day, -day, I'm doing compiling and uh, rendering audio and things like that. Uh, but I think it should handle uh, video rendering as well, and 35 degrees is nothing, so I'm really quite pleased with it. And the case doesn't get warm to the touch even. I haven't yet put it through its paces properly because I've just been really busy. But I plan to do that in the future and uh, switch over to this as my main system. And the great benefit for me, other than it being a completely free software system, is that it's also completely silent and I really appreciate that. So I hope you found this video interesting and enjoyable. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll get back to you. This was a fun little project. It took me a couple of days to do the whole thing, including the uh, desoldering. And it took me a week or two uh, back and forth with the prototyping for all the different adapters. But I think it was worth it in the end, and I'm really pleased with the result. I'll leave links in the video description to where you can get the Libra Mini and the HD Plex case and also to Octagon Precision, the guys who did all the uh, water jetting for the metal work for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.